Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at adding opposites. Let's do this. So in this lesson, what you can expect is that we're going to talk about opposites, and then we're going to add opposites. Pretty straightforward. Well, let's get into it. First off, we need to talk about opposites. Black and white, up and down, left and right. But the thing is that numbers have opposites too. So when we're talking about num opposites in math, we're not talking about opposites like up and down, left and right, black and white. We're talking about number opposites. Here are some examples. 2 and negative 2. 5 and negative 5. 11 and negative 11. Do you see a pattern? 3 and negative 3. Let's see if you've figured out the pattern. Let's try and match some of these numbers with their opposites. Go ahead and try it out. Pause the recording and try it out and come back. Hey, welcome back. 34 is the opposite of negative 34. 15 is the opposite of negative 15. So you can see there are some opposites. Now we also have 42 and negative 42 and 12 and negative 12. So we had a couple of opposites that were on the same line because Mr. Buffington is super tricky and sometimes mean. All right. <laughs> um, you are in seventh grade. You're ready for some challenging questions. Um, so it's okay. All right. Now let's look at what happens when we actually add opposites because finding an opposite is pretty straightforward. When you add an opposite, this is what happens. So here is a thermometer, let's say that's zero degrees. And if we add three degrees, and then we subtract three degrees, where would we be? So we started at zero, we add three, we subtract three, we are back at zero, right? That's kind of makes sense, right? We increase the temperature by three, we decrease the temperature of three, we're back at zero. The way we write this in a math expression is like this, 3 plus negative 3, and it becomes an equation when we say equals 0. 3 plus 3, 3 plus negative 3 equals 0. Or negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. Both of those basically say the same thing. We've just moved the numbers around a bit. So I want you to try this one out. 24 plus what gives us 0? Did you say negative 24? Yeah, 24 plus negative 24 gives us 0. How about negative 17 plus something? What do we get? Negative 17 plus positive 17. Negative 17 plus 17 equals 0. Are you noticing something about adding opposites? There are several patterns that you might start to see. And now that we've made it a little bit easier, we're going to move into talking about variables. A variable is a letter. It stands in place of a number. Okay. If we're not sure what the number means or if the number might change, we put in a letter instead of a number. Here's an example. Negative 17 plus a number is equal to zero. We just did this question, right, where we know that that number is equal to 17 because negative 17 plus 17 equals 0. But the way we'd say this is n is equal to 17. So let's practice with a couple of questions. 15 plus a number, n, is equal to 0. What is our n? What is our number? n is equal to negative 15. Notice we're still adding opposites to give to equal 0. We've just put in a variable there. Try this one out. n plus negative 42 is equal to 0. Our number, n, is equal to positive 42 because 42 plus negative 42 is equal to 0. All right. Now let's make this into a real life situation. Maybe not a super real life situation, but let's see. I accelerated in my car until I'm going 60 miles per hour. How much will I need to slow down until I'm at a stop? So my current speed is positive 60 miles an hour. How much will I need to slow down until my speed is zero? 
Try that out. Think about it. And then try and write a math expression to actually show this. If I were to write it, I would write it out like this. 60 plus some number is equal to 0. If I'm at a stop, my speed is 0. So what number is it? 60 plus what gives me 0? Well, I know that and when I add opposites, I get 0. So 60 plus negative 60 is equal to 0. Speeding up is positive. Slowing down is negative in this example. So my speed needs to go negative 60 miles per hour, or I have to slow down 60 miles per hour for me to be at a stop. Let's do one more word problem that has to do with swimming. All right, if I dive down 4 meters, and I'll call that negative 4, m for meters, how far do I need to come up before I get back to the surface? To write it out as an expression or, or as an equation, I would write it out negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0. Okay, with this one I didn't use a variable. I could have said negative 4 plus n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 4, but in this one I just wrote it as adding opposites. And another example of a time where we would definitely use positive and negative numbers is money. If I earn $25 and I spend $25, how much money do I have? If I write this as an equation, it would be 25 plus negative 25 is equal to zero. I had 25, I spent 25, I have zero. And our final practice question, we have this one, negative 56 plus a is equal to zero. I put the letter a in there instead of n. We've been using n for number, but with a variable you can put whatever letter you want. So I've just switched it with the letter a. I want you to tell me what is the value of a. Did you get that a was positive 56? If so, good job. If not, it's 56. All right, try this one out. 110 plus b is equal to zero. What's my value for b? b is equal to negative 110 because positive 110 plus negative 110 gives me zero. All right, so a couple things to keep in mind. Opposites are the same number with the opposite sign, and when you add opposites, your result is zero. So the sum of opposite numbers is zero. I hope that lesson has been fun and helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.